Well, we're picking up where we left off on the Denver and Rio Grande Western 65-foot turntable. Yes, it's a huge one. Oh, man. And when you're working in this large F scale, which is 120.3, uh, this is the largest thing. It's the largest thing on the railroad, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the largest thing I've ever built. I think it's pretty complicated. Because it's all engineering and it's all scratch built, and I've got to figure it all out literally from scratch mm -hmm. uh, while at the same time building something this big and uh, this complicated in terms of its engineering and all of that engineering has to be strong enough to hold a 40 pound locomotive yes so uh well it's there it is uh. <laughs> now, this is where we're at this is the turntable pit and we've already been engineering the turntable bridge and a few things, but we're ready to start screwing together the pit, mounting the motor, and uh, seeing if this is going to work. So I, I went through several different, uh, I guess you could say, iterations of figuring out exactly how to screw the decking together here. I need to make sure that I pull the layers tightly together and I'm using grabber screws here with a countersunk head to, to keep the heads out of the way. But I, I'm, I'm getting gaps in there. So this is the idea that I came up with. I'm drilling through the top two layers uh, just down to the bottom layer, making sure that I don't go all the way through. That way the teeth and the grabber screw will only bite the bottom layer and that way the screw should pull the, the layers together. So as I'm putting the screw in here, the, the teeth are only hitting that bottom layer and the screw is free to rotate in the other layers. And now as I tighten this, it's actually pulling all of the layers tightly together. And then if I come back with the shorter screws for reinforcement, it's not going to build in any kind of gaps. And that's working brilliantly. The top layer has to be even with the uh, OSB board uh, covering the rest of the, the railroad. And so I need to put uh, spacers in here. And Steve cut out the spacers out of plywood on his table saw. And now I can screw those in here in perfect alignment with the OSB board on the rest of the layout. And then when I put the top layer on here, that will align neatly with the OSB. And then there's a layer of soundboard that goes on top of that, and then the ties attached to the soundboard. I'm sliding the top layer in because it actually goes underneath some soundboard at the very back. And uh, yes, it's lining up perfectly with the OSB, and I'll be able to put soundboard across that gap all the way over to the turntable pit and then my ties on top of that. Okay, back to the turntable bridge. So far, the turntable bridge consists of the three layers of plywood all screwed together, and then the center shaft that runs down through the whole thing that supports the middle. Uh, none of this will show. Ultimately, there'll be the main beams on both sides of this wooden bridge that makes it look like uh, a steel bridge structure. But now I need to check to make sure that the top layer is perfectly in alignment with the bridge and that the spacing here between the bridge and the edge of the pit isn't getting larger or smaller or higher or lower. And there, there's some minor discrepancies in it and I'm actually going to take a little shave off of the pit right through here. And now for the, the sides, the, the main beam sides that will cover up the plywood bridge itself, there are these big, uh, oh, I guess you call them fish belly beams, and they uh, match the, the contour of the bottom of the pit, and then they're perfectly level across the top. Now, we were very fortunate, an old friend from the MRS days, Dwayne, who's an awesome cabinet builder, carpenter, uh, looked us up. He's been following along on the channel and he said, gee, I can cut out those sides using my router. 
He, uh, he has both just a, a collection of regular routers, but he also has a CNC router that can do work even this fine. This is uh, a photograph that he loaded into his CNC router and carved that into a sheet of plastic. And look what happens when you hold it up to a light. I am just stunned and amazed that a router can do this kind of accurate work. But a, com a computer numerically controlled CNC router can be this accurate. For the turntable bridge, he's just simply using a, a regular handheld router and then laying out the shape here and then very carefully cutting out the shape just using his router. Once he has the shape, the router can duplicate it uh, over and over. So both sides are very easily done. He simply lays one finished side over another sheet of plywood and cuts out the other side. And then he's going to do the same thing with a sheet of plastic because there will be a layer of uh, plywood and then overlaying that a layer of styrene plastic that will then have all of the rivet detail and bracing glued to that. The plywood side simply screw to the bridge. Uh, we're still trying to plan out exactly how to handle uh, the sides once the plastic is on there, but I'm thinking of using a finish head Allen head screw that goes through and holds the entire assembly to each side so that if we have to remove it, we can still remove it. But for now, we're just temporarily attaching the sides to check for alignment. So far, perfect. Once the plastic sides are laminated over this, there will be all of the surface detail glued to that, which uh, I think will be pretty simple with the with the exception of the rivet detail. I'm still trying to figure out because there's hundreds of rivets on here. I'm still trying to figure out if it's going to need any additional support down between the beams here. And I don't think so. I think it's going to be just fine being mostly open on the bottom here. The prototype bridge has the two outer beams and then cross bracing through here. Of course, all constructed out of steel and then 12 foot wood ties will be laid on top of the bridge and the track spiked down to that. This is just a piece of Yagas Creek flex track. I'm just setting it in place to get a sense of the alignment. You can see that the main beams are designed to sit directly under the rails so that the weight of the locomotive is carried straight down into the beams. Okay, let's get back to the motor drive. When last we looked at this, I just kind of temporarily held it in place to see which belt to use and what the alignment would be. And now I'm moving on to permanently mounting the motor in place. And then I can put power to it and see just exactly how fast the turntable is going to spin at a full 12 volts. And there it is right there. It's actually spinning pretty darn fast, but I don't know, maybe this is a speed that I would want to use from time to time. But what I want to do is to be able to control this speed so that I can go faster and slower. Right now, it looks kind of neat going this speed, but I'm, and if I want to go this fast, I can turn the controller all the way up to this speed. But I want to have the controller on here so that I can slow down and just creep into final position. The main pulley currently is an 80 tooth pulley and another thing I could do if I think this is going too fast is I can substitute out a 120 tooth pulley and that would slow the, the maximum speed down to uh, what something like 20% less than this. So I may do that. I may just substitute out a 120 tooth pulley for the main pulley. It's actually sort of fun riding on one of these. You didn't sit on there and ride, did you? <laughs> no, I, I just set the cell phone on there and let oh, it ride. Oh, I was going to say, because fun is fun. Oh, there I, you are. <laughs> I'm right over here. <laughs> but we've ridden on a couple of different turntables, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a little like riding a carousel. Oh, the one up to the Evanston Roundhouse, that's my favorite. And that's all that's used for is giving rides. Right. They don't, well, for uh, now. For, for now, now. One of these days they're going to have a couple of locomotives running up there. But so far I'm very pleased. I lose sleep. 
Uh, well, if they're going around in circles, you would lose sleep. <laughs> well, it's just... I, I literally will wake up in the middle of the night going, is this actually going to work? Yeah, I've had nights like that working on a model, like wake up, is this working out right? So I think sometimes those little uh, wake up in the middle of the night events are where you get some of the best work done. Yes. Because you're it's on your mind even though you're asleep. I've actually come up with the best ideas in the middle of the night. I'm still somewhat concerned about friction at that main point in the middle. So I stacked up 15 pounds of weight on here and it's, it's having no effect at all. Everything's still running just fine. Uh, when I pull a 40 pound locomotive out on here, it might not be quite, quite so smooth. But keep it in mind that most of the weight is actually going to be supported at the ends of the bridge on two little wheel trucks that ride on the outside ring rail. So uh, there won't be that much downforce on this main bearing, so I don't think it's going to be an issue at all. Because it's really smooth right now with 15 pounds on there. It's having no effect whatsoever. I'm also going to be constructing the slip ring, which will take power up to the track. On Tuesday, I showed how I build these slip rings out of audio jacks. So I purchased a bunch of these mono audio jacks and uh, a stereo plug. It doesn't matter if the plug is stereo or mono, it's still going to work. So just for a little tighter fit, I'm using a stereo plug. And then the mono jack slides up inside the center tube and the wires from here go up to the rails and that'll carry power up to the rails. I'm constructing a, a sleeve here that will hold the jack in place inside the tube and I'm constructing the sleeve out of plastic just to ensure that there can't possibly be any kind of a short out to the brass outer tube. So the whole system here will be wrapped in, in a plastic tube. Anyway, so far so good. and. Uh, Moving on now to finishing the turntable pit. There's a lot going on there. And uh, I've got that space now between the top and uh, the footings for the ring rail that all needs to be filled in. So that's next up. Right. So anyway, hopefully you're going to want to follow along with that as we go forward. Or as around in circles. <laughs> So, anyway, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe by clicking on the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you on Tuesday. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.